And we can see that a new world is opening when we look at digital labor. When we're talking about agents, we're talking about digital labor. When I took the Waymo here this morning, and I got in the car, and I hit the button start ride, it's digital labor. It's all happening digitally. The CEO of Salesforce made a bold prediction that we are going to have a digital workforce in the very near future. And this comes in the form of AI agents. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I'm incredibly bullish on agents and 2025 is going to be the critical year. We're going to have a massive influx of digital labor entering the workforce and it is going to have huge consequences on what the world looks like. So all of this was from the Agent Force 2.0 event held by Salesforce. They invited me there. I was actually in that room. And so we're going to watch the most interesting bits from this talk, and I'm going to break it down for you, and I'm going to give you my thoughts. And the most interesting thing I learned from this entire event is how they're positioning Slack to be the frontline interface between you and your human team members and your digital team members. And thank you to Salesforce for partnering with me on this video. Thank you for inviting me to the event. It was awesome. So let's get into it. Right now, there are thousands of customers working with thousands of agents, working with thousands of humans, all in tandem right now. You can go to it at help.salesforce.com and see it actually play out. All right, so I'm just gonna stop it right away and set the scene here. So this is Mark Benioff. He is the CEO of Salesforce. Salesforce, if you're not familiar, it's a customer relationship management system and really much more than that at this point. But what Mark and Salesforce is really known for is being the first to move software to the cloud with the SaaS business model, that's software as a service. And so Salesforce has been very cutting edge for a while. And Mark Benioff has been extremely vocal about agents in particular, and really seems to be transitioning his entire company to being an agent first company. And him and Satya Nadella seem to be butting heads. So Mark Benioff has said pretty negative things about Microsoft's Copilot products. He's been extremely vocal about comparing it to Clippy, basically meaning that it's AI, but it doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't actually provide any value. And so what he's gonna be describing right now is this shift where digital labor in the form of AI agents are going to be entering the workforce in huge numbers in the coming years. So let's keep watching. I guess for 25 years as the CEO of Salesforce, what have I really been doing? We've been building software, but this is different because all of a sudden, as a CEO, I'm not just managing human beings, but I'm also managing agents that there is an agentic layer around the support today for Salesforce. It's not some vision, fantasy, in the future idea. It's what is happening right now. And when he says right now, he literally means right now. They've deployed AI agents on their help website and they're actively using it with thousands of customers. And so that's really his big differentiation, or at least how he's positioning Agent Force versus Copilot. He really has made a big deal of Copilot basically not being used by Microsoft itself and really nobody using it all that much. Yet he says he has deployed it internally, it being agents from day one. Let's keep watching. Why does that matter? And why is that significant? I think there's a couple of things that are important. We've seen the movies for decades on AI and where the future is going, but we haven't really been working with agents ourselves using these kind of next generation AI models grounded in the data that allows us to do our jobs. Now I wanna pause it for a second and I wanna to touch on something. Now, just a few days ago, I made a video about Satya Nadella saying essentially, agents are going to collapse software. Collapse meaning the UI layer of software probably won't be around for very much longer because you're just going to interact with agents who are then going to interact with the data layer. So the database. Now it seems like Mark Benioff and Salesforce in general is already thinking that that is also going to be the case. And so they're investing heavily in agents. And right now, of course, Salesforce, their tentpole product, is an interface on top of a database. Obviously, that's a huge oversimplification of what it is. But imagine, rather than interacting with the interface, you can completely interact with agents who then interact with your customer data. And essentially, 
That's what Mark's vision is as well. And so for this transition period, he's giving you both options. Obviously, you can go to the traditional UI, the website, salesforce.com, but you can already develop your own agents, deploy them internally, deploy them externally, and allow them to interact with your customer data. And this stuff is not a vision in the future. It is available now. They gave me demos. It's quite impressive what they can do already. Now, here's the most important part, and it's something that I've been thinking about quite a bit, which is what is the actual UI layer between you and the agent? Right now, it's text-based mostly. Obviously, there's going to be voice in the future as well. But right now, look at ChatGPT, look at Claude, look at Perplexity. They all have voice elements, but the primary interaction method is text. And a few years ago, Salesforce bought the company Slack, which is an internal company chat tool. And now they are betting heavily that Slack is going to be the primary interface between you and agents. In fact, almost everything that they demo to us started in Slack. You create your agents in Slack, you talk to them in Slack, you give them tasks from Slack, they report back to you in Slack. And I think that's genius. Slack as the primary interface between you and agents just makes a lot of sense to me because all of a sudden you can have your own chat with your human team members but you can integrate easily with your digital team members. So let's keep watching. And actually making our businesses much, much better, much easier, much lower cost. And then there's this new opportunity that we all are still getting our head around to the point that even at Dreamforce, I didn't use these words, digital labor. Because not only are we managing all this information, but we're also now managing this digital labor. And we can see that a new world is opening when we look at digital labor. When we're talking about agents, we're talking about digital labor. When I took the Waymo here this morning, and I got in the car, and I hit the button Start Ride, it's digital labor. It's the robot is bringing me here. It's all happening digitally. So one thing that I'm gonna be talking a lot about in 2025 is digital labor and what that means for humanity. I really believe in the short term and midterm, we're going to see an explosion in productivity for the entire world, an explosion in the GDP of the US and other countries as well. But in the long run, if we have all of this digital labor, both in the digital world and the physical world in the form of embodied agents, AKA robots, then all of a sudden humans are gonna have less and less need to work. Now that doesn't mean we won't work, but it just means we might not have that necessity to. I personally cannot imagine not working because luckily I get to do what I love, but a lot of people don't. And I can imagine a world in which there's just an abundance of resources. So next he's gonna talk about different interaction layers with AI. So not only text, but voice as well, and also robots. And so these are all manifestations of AI agents. But you could see how already, how voice is becoming an incredible new user interface. You can see how avatars are becoming an incredible new, new user interface. And you can see how robots will be an incredible new user interface. There's no way that Dreamforce 2025 will look like Dreamforce 2024. We've already crossed the bridge. We've already crossed this bridge. And what the bridge is, is this bridge to this new world of digital labor. I'm not sure that when we started this journey, even we fully understand it, where we were going. Because when you look at the digital labor TAM, it's not in the billions or tens of billions or hundreds of billions, it's in the trillions. So TAM, total addressable market, basically what is the business economic opportunity of this market? And he thinks agents are going to be a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. And of course, I agree. I could not be more bullish on agents. You've heard me say it a million times. I probably should make a shirt that says that, but I really do believe it. I'm so incredibly excited to see what the world looks like when all of these agents are helping us every day, both in our personal lives and in our business lives. Now let's talk about what is required to actually see this vision. One thing is, as I've mentioned, you need agents, obviously, but you need them connected to the data layer, to the database. And that's what he's gonna be describing now. Now what Salesforce has that really differentiates them is they have essentially all of a company's customer data. They have a lot more than that, but the customer data is really the key here. 
Now, when you allow agents to access that customer data, they become super powered because they know about your customers, they know how to follow up appropriately, they know how to respond to inquiries from those customers, maybe when they're gonna churn, maybe when it's time to upsell them. All of this stuff can now happen automatically using agents. And so an agent without any tools and without the data, it's essentially a question and answer service with no grounding in the truth. And that's the important part. Agents need tools, they need memory, and they need access to that ground truth, to the data layer. So that's what he's describing now. I go to help.salesforce.com and I log in, and now I'm grounded into my information, which means it's looking at my data, it's looking at my metadata, the data cloud is federated to my other data sources. And all of a sudden what I can do is start to work with that agent to resolve my customer service and support needs. Suddenly, overnight, it was stunning, escalations to humans dropped by 50%. That's a big thought. So we have about 32,000 conversations a week on that site. And then just about 5,000 were now going to humans. And before, it was about 10,000. So that's what I'm talking about. These are the productivity gains that we're gonna see in the workforce and in the consumer world as well. But let's stick to enterprise. Imagine now, instead of 10,000 conversations going to human agents, now there's only 5,000. So the human agents, now have a lot more bandwidth to do other things, to be creative and to think of other initiatives that might help the company. Or maybe in the future, they don't need to do anything, but who knows? All right, now I wanna tell you a little bit about the actual nuts and bolts of how all of this works. So here's the data cloud. This is where all of your business's data is going to be housed. Here's the agentic loop. So these are where your agents are going to live. They're going to think, they're going to work with other agents. They retrieve the data, perform some action into the customer 360 apps and channels, and then pass it back to the data cloud. And so that's the loop that the agents will be working within. I think one thing we're gonna see a lot of in 2025 is the software layer being more and more customized or evolved into being able to interact with agents or agents being able to interact with that software layer directly. And so that is what Salesforce has done. They've really deeply integrated these agents into all of their different pieces of their software suite and the data layer. So that's why it seems to work really well. And the last thing I wanna tell you about is the agents that they actually allowed me to build with them as part of their demos. And so for my business, I have different people all the time reaching out to me, asking about different opportunities to work together. And what I really wanted is a way to automatically kind of qualify them, put them in a CRM, and then follow up with them as necessary. And with Agent Force, with what they've actually shown me, I was able to do that just by describing it in natural language, which was really nice. And so that's what you're seeing me do here with their sales engineer. So that's it. Agent Force 2.0 was a fun event. Mark Benioff and Salesforce's vision of an agentic future aligns with mine extremely well. I'm going to be talking about agents a lot in 2025, so hopefully you don't get sick of it because it is going to be the prominent theme of AI in 2025. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.